This is the best Figma plugin in the world. How many times have you gone to Google and typed out skeuomorphism or glass UI or anything like that and you tried to copy it in Figma but you couldn't really get it right? You added every possible shadow you can see, every highlight, every color, practically everything, but it still doesn't really look that right. Well, look no further. This plugin called Morph does absolutely everything for you. It takes care of six huge UI trends in the world of UI design, including skeuomorphism, glass UI, and also neon. In order to download it, go to the community section on on Figma, look up Morph and then click on the plugins tab. When you get there, just click download and then you're all set to go. Let's get into it. The first effect that Morph actually breaks down is called skeuomorphism. This effect has been really controversial lately because a lot of people say that it's not really good design because people that have trouble seeing struggle a lot with this effect and this trend. Take that with a grain of salt, but with that out of the way, let's get into how you can actually build this in Figma with this new plugin. Create a shape, any shape you want. Ideally, you'd be doing this for a card in your UI, maybe even a dashboard, something like that. Select the shape you want, go to the plugins tab, click on morph, and then you're all set. Now you'll see a couple of metrics that you can change when you're actually in the morph plugin and we'll get into that right now. Now the first thing that you'll have seen is that it creates a duplicate of the shape that you already had. Once it creates that shape, you see that there's a bunch of options here that you can play around with. For one, you see that there's the intensity slider. So this actually changes how much the effect is being put onto the actual shape. You see that there's a light direction knob where you can then change where the light is coming from. And then you see there's also a surface part where you can change what the actual surface of the shape looks like. If I zoom out here, you'll see exactly what I mean. If we want to change what the surface of the shape actually looks like, whether that's a convex or a concave shape, then we can just do exactly that. This changes it to look more like a narrow underlying bridge, and then that does exactly the same. So it looks almost like a dent or a bump, something like that. So that's the skew morphism effect with the morph plugin. How about if you want to do something different? To achieve any other look, all you have to do again is click on the actual shape that you want, you go to apply, you have to click it again, and then just go to say neon, glitch, reflect, glassy, or gradient. For now, we'll just do neon. You click on neon, and then we have a couple of different options here. First, we'll check without background. So we can then just see the actual shape with the neon border and that's all we really want. Then we've got the intensity that changes obviously how much of the effect is applied to it. You've got the different colors. So if you want it to be a red neon, a purple neon, a green, orange, anything like that, we then have that ready. Let's put that over there so we can check out the rest of them. Let's go over here. I click on the shape that I want. I go to plugins, down to morph and then open morph again. So for this one, we'll go to glassy just so we can see the three best effects first and then we can move on to the rest. We click on glassy and right off the bat, we can't really see much because it's on top of another shape. But if we move it over, we'll see exactly what this effect is and what it looks like. So first off, you can change the blurriness of it. So the more blurry it is, then the least you can see in the background, but I think a middle ground is probably the best way to be. And then also the opacity. So if you want it to be very opaque, then you can do just that. Also, we can change the surface of of the shape as well. If you do a flat, it kind of gets rid of all the borders and it doesn't really look like it's a concave shape or a convex shape. It just looks like a flat glass. And this can look kind of cool if you're doing like a credit card effect or anything like that. But then we've got these other options where we've got this convex shape. This adds a little border around it and then this concave shape. So it kind of dips into the shape as it is. So I'm just gonna go with the default one or the glass one just to see where we are. Next, we're gonna check out some of the other ones. I'm just gonna go into morph and open morph this this time. One annoying thing about this plugin is that you can't just have it open all the time. Sometimes you need to go back into plugins and keep it open, but I think that's just a Figma problem, not really a morph problem. Another effect that we can do is reflect. So if you want anything to be reflective, say that you have a bunch of words and you want them to kind of reflect or you have an image, something like that, then that's the way to do it. You can also change the direction. So if you want it to be on the left of the shape, on top, on the right, on the bottom, and then you also change the roughness. Another thing that you can do here is you can then change the distance if you want it to be a smaller reflection reflection or a larger, then you can do that. You can also then just change the actual reflection shape if you want it to be a bit longer or shorter. Let's delete that and show you some other ones. You click apply again and that kind of opens it back up. Before we get into the next feature of this plugin, make sure that you subscribe and like the video to see more videos just like this one. The last feature of this app that I really want to show you is called Gradient. If you're familiar with Illustrator and all the gradient possibilities that you have on Illustrator and then you jump on to Figma and you're kind of missing that, well, this is your solution to that. You have all of these different shades that you can play around with and also play around with the actual ellipses that create the gradient. You can go to analogous where that kind of changes what the colors look like and also complementary. Now, if you want to actually change what the gradient 
face look like, you can then just drag the shape as it is or pick any other color. And that kind of changes the gradient. And that's a really easy way to get this kind of mesh gradient that you have in Illustrator and Photoshop and apps like that, but not really in Figma as it is. A couple things that I don't like about this plugin that I probably should mention is one, the glitch effect, which is when you click on it, it creates this glitch effect, but I don't really think it works that well, or I don't really see a use case for it. Maybe you do and you really benefit from this, but I personally don't. So I just have to say that. Another thing that I like to see in this plugin is a holograph effect or a holographic effect, where when you clicked on it, it created this holographic effect that you can then apply to other shapes, just like you can here with skeuomorphism and glass, all of that. I like to see that with the holograph effect, because for now, if I want to do that, then what I have to do is go into Google Images or Unsplash or even find different styles on Figma and then apply it directly. But that doesn't really work all the time. If you like videos just like this one, where I dive a little bit more into UI and web design, then make sure that you check out this playlist where I have a ton of videos just on that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.